Hey, what is up guys and welcome back to Predator Exotics. On today's video, we're going to be covering the Exoterra Large Low, which is the one we've got in front of us, as well as the Large Wide, which is the 45 High. Obviously, you can get similar species in both. This one's a little bit more perfect for your fossorial or basically ground dwelling species. The 45 gives you a little bit more climbing room for some of the species that will like to adventure around their enclosure. So this size tank is actually kind of another one of those kind of like middle ground tanks where you can put loads of the other stuff that we've talked about previously in it, but you can't quite hit that four foot mark of some of the some of the space that you need for some of those animals. So there's not gonna be an extensive list today. And like we always say, this isn't a full list of everything you can keep in here. It's just some of our suggestions. So we're gonna go through all the different skinks, geckos, frogs, uh, snakes, everything you can get inside here, all the exotics. So without further ado, let's get into the list. So starting off is going to be one of the largest species of frog, and that is the giant African bullfrog, also known as the pixie frog as well. I think it goes by a couple names uh, out and about in there. This guy is massive and would be an awesome addition to this size tank. You need the space on their size, but they're not going to move around a lot anyway. They're just an absolute garbage disposal machine. Uh, they'll eat anything you put in there and they are super cool. And another beast of an amphibian would be your cane toads. These are obviously from South America, but they're an invasive species down in Australia and they get huge, especially the Suriname variety. Um, they get massive and they obviously have the large um, paws on the back of their head that are super impressive and sort of gold eyes. They're a super cool species and underrated in my opinion. So next up is the Malaysian horn frog, another awesome species to put inside this tank. I think some of the actual species of frogs and toads that you could put inside this tank and the larger variety I think are super cool. These are also another awesome addition to add in there. And a very wide ranging species would be your green toad. These are found all throughout Europe, into the Middle East and Northern Africa. So they can cope with them harsher temperatures and they can be kept a little bit drier. There's also a massive variety of colour. Um, they're obviously called the green toad. They're like a beigey brown base colour with green spots and the green spots can get super bright if you get the right variety. And another species that you can put in here is the Colorado River Toad. Now this is a very special toad for a reason that I'm going to let you Google on your own because we're not going to talk about it here on Predator Exotics. Uh, but it is an awesome species and definitely has some cool features. And going back to South America, in Guiana, there's the Guiana smooth-sided toad. These are a really cool species with that brown base colour again. But they have these awesome orange stripes that go from sort of the back of their head down their flanks and would look awesome in a bioactive enclosure. And finally for amphibians, it is the Suriname horned frog, another awesome species of frog. Um, just, it would be such a cool addition to this and it's definitely one that we, we're actually quite interested in. Uh, I think these are a cool species and it's almost like a giant Pac-Man. Yeah, like If is. you like Pac-Mans, check these out because they're an awesome, impressive species. Got the same sort of colour. Definitely looks there. yeah very similar into this, but it is just the large variety. I don't think we've ever actually seen any uh, around for no, sale. Not no, no, nothing in, in, in the local area, but definitely would be an awesome addition. I know that Tom really wants to get one of those. So before we move on from our amphibians to our reptiles, we'll put in a quick note about some of the invertebrates you can get. Obviously this is a huge terrestrial tank, so it's not great for a lot of insects um, or invertebrates, but one you could put in here would be your bird eater spiders. Once they get huge, then you could put them in here. Um, most of them could probably live in a 60, but if you wanted a massive display case for your uh, tarantula, a bird eater would go nice in here. And another one that you could put in here, um, you know, you could put in most sized ones anyway, would be the giant African lamb snails. They are an awesome addition, you can have loads of them in here, but that's not, that's kind of all it for invertebrates. Once you start hitting these larger sizes, there isn't, there isn't too much to choose from. You, you're going to want smaller tanks for them. So let's get into the reptiles. We'll start off with skinks. Skinks is a passion of ours here at Predatory Exotics. We love them. They're sort of an awesome species of lizard with that streamlined body, super cool. So one of my favourites would be the Peter's Banded Skink. Um, these are a really awesome desert species with those black bands and the black rings around their eyes. It's super cool and they'll do great in this low enclosure as they don't really climb a lot. One to put in the larger sized enclosure, the actual 45 high one, would be the Fire Skink. This is definitely one we're considering here at Predator Exotics and have seen quite a few available in the local area for sale. 
their awesome red coloration on them is amazing. You would only be able to really fit one in here. It'd be a push to put two in here. You'd want to upgrade to a bigger size, but one would fit perfectly. And the Berber skinks are another really active species, like the fire skink. They'll also enjoy a little bit of climbing. Another desert species, which is obviously my passion. They've got the awesome sort of checkered grey and orange on their back. Super cool, and they'd go great inside this enclosure in a nice desert vivarium. Are you a fan of the blue tongue skink as well? Well, this is actually an alteration version of it. It is the pink tongue skink. This one doesn't grow to as big of a size, so you wouldn't need like a four foot to six foot tank for the, uh, like you would with the blue tongue, but the pink tongue uh, only grows to about size of, of that would fit nicely in this, in this tank. Um, it doesn't get too large, and of course the only difference really, they look very similar, is a pink tongue and a blue tongue. That's all the difference, but they are an awesome species, and I believe they're a bit more affordable. Uh, a little bit, not, not too not much. Not too much in, yeah. in the actual difference of price, but uh, it definitely an awesome addition if you don't have the space to put a massive four foot wooden one. So if you want a smaller skink species and you'd like to keep sort of a colony inside, this low is perfect for sandfish because they're actually a um, fossorial species. They're going to spend most of their time underground. So any height you add is just going to be wasted. But because they're a smaller skink than the rest of the ones we've mentioned, you could keep two or three inside this enclosure with a nice hot basking spot of sort of 30, 38, 35 degrees, nice and hot, and it'll have a nice temperature gradient all the way to the other side. So moving on to some of your gecko species as well, starting off with one of the ones that is most common in the reptile trade, both of us have kept them, it is the leopard gecko. Now of course this would be an awesome size tank for your leopard gecko, you could do a really nice setup in here and it would live happily in this tank. And then also another variation would be the East Indian leopard gecko, this one I feel like is not as known throughout the trade. Uh, also just a different choice um, if, you're, if you're not really wanting just the generic leopard gecko. Both really great choices and would live happily in this size tank. And one rising in popularity recently is the African fat tail. It's similar to the leopard gecko except it's more of a humid version, almost like the East Indian leopard gecko. There's tons of varieties and morphs coming out, so you've got like patternless, oreo, there's so many different ones coming out and a really awesome species from tropical Africa. Now, one that has been a massive topic in our household recently is the cave geckos. Uh, you can get the Chinese cave gecko. There's so many different variations. There's the Japanese cave gecko as well. They kind of all look very similar, just the colors kind of change slightly. But the major thing that we've been talking about is you have to keep them really cool and humid. Uh, now, of course, our reptile room gets quite warm, so we'd have to find somewhere else in the house to then like kind of fit the tank. It would fit wonderfully in these size tanks, um, but you, it's just that temperature variation is something that's key and you have to kind of keep it cool. Especially, uh, it can get really hot here at the UK summers. Um, I know it doesn't sound like that, the UK is always supposed to be raining, but um, it can get quite warm and it's just kind of something that we're considering heavily but just making sure that we be able to, to do them. it properly yeah. if, we, if we did look it's at it. It's max them. sort of 22 degrees for them. You don't want to go higher than 22 degrees. And as Ollie mentioned, our reptile room gets hot. They're all on racking. So the ambient temperature from the tank below in the hotspot obviously rises onto the shelf above. Um, and it actually rises too high for the Chinese cave gecko. But as you can see from the pictures that have been shown up on screen, they have a wonderful colour pattern. And these are an awesome gecko if you're able to keep them properly. So let's go back to a desert species, the wonder gecko. There's a few different species. Sometimes they're called the frog-eyed gecko, and you've got the Robarovsky's gecko. They're from sort of Middle East, Russia, sort of places like that. And they like it nice and dry, but a big gecko species with awesome large scales, almost fish-like scales. Um, we've seen them locally, and I'm super interested in them. So we're gonna do some research and maybe get them in the future. Now we're going to be moving on from geckos into your snake varieties that you can keep inside this tank. Now I know that a lot of people say that you should always keep uh, snakes in wooden vids. Uh, we're not in agreement with that. We do find that if you if you can properly uh, manage your temperatures throughout a glass viv and if you insulate it and look into that kind of stuff, they will live happily inside here. So we're going to start off with another one of the basic ones, but one that we actually own here at Predator Exotics, one of the most recent additions, and that is your corn snake. Now, we have a wonderful snow corn snake, which we're currently keeping in a smaller tank because it's only a baby, but you can get loads of different variations of this one, scaleless, you know, uh, Ocotee, like all the different kind of morphs that you can get in here is amazing. We actually went to a breeder who uh, specialised in some scaleless corn snakes, so it was really cool to see as well. But they would live happily in here. 
if your corn snake does um, grow quite large, you might have to put it into a, into a maybe a larger tank than this. Uh, some of them can get quite large, but some of them would live happily in this three foot tank. So other rat snake species you get in here would be the mandarin rat snake. This is an awesome sort of rat snake from the Chinese area. They're yellow, black, gray. They've got awesome color pattern that's completely different to any rat snake I've seen. They're a little bit more pricey um, and it's harder to keep the temperature at the desired temperature because they like it a little bit cooler. Um, but an awesome snake species that not a lot of people have. If you're wanting to now start to splash the cash, uh, a one that is rising in price and popularity is the milk snakes. Um, we've seen them. We've seen them kind of spike in price recently uh, on how expensive they are. But definitely one that I know Tom is interested in getting. They would. They have an awesome like color pair pattern in terms of like the striping down their body of the different colors, um, and they you can get them in a variation of colors as well. Um, they would live happily in here and definitely definitely one. I yeah. think we will be getting. <laughs> milk snakes are awesome. They've obviously got the Pueblo milk snakes, um, uh, loads of different ones, um, but you've got to keep in mind that they don't all reach the same size. So like a Honduran milk snake, um, they're going to reach sort of five, six foot. So they are going to outgrow a three foot tank. You're going to have to put them in a four foot tank. Um, and as well as the, um, the black milk snake is the largest one that get up to seven foot. So you want to keep it to sort of the Pueblo and stuff like that, the smaller milk snakes, but they go great inside here. Just make sure you know which species you have. And going back to our rat snakes, the Thai bamboo rat snake, there's a few different species. You have the banded ones as well as the striped ones. They're the awesome red and orange with the black stripes or bands. An awesome species, but again, nice and cool because they're from sort of the mountains in sort of Asia. So you like it cool and humid. So not sure if we're going to be able to get this species as the temperature requirements might not be perfect for our reptile room. When we went to the breeder, he also bred another species that would be awesome to keep in here. And that would be the house snakes. We saw some awesome, like kind of like almost jet black house snakes as well. They were really cool to see. They would live perfectly in here. And I feel like it's one of those ones that I, I, I'd say is a bit less known uh, around and about. You don't really hear that name thrown up and about, but also another awesome species to put inside here. So the last colubrid we're going to mention would be the smooth green snake. You are going to want to put this in the 45 version of this tank as they are arboreal. Um, you're going to have a nice planted bioactive enclosure that they'll utilize all the space for because they're a super active species. So it would make a great display. The only thing that's different with this one, because they're insect eaters, um, they don't get the UVB requirements. So you're going to have to put that UVB strip, which you're probably going to have anyway if it's a bioactive tank, as you're going to want as much light as well as your LED. But again, another awesome snake for someone to have if they're not interested in keeping mice or they're scared of mice, but they love snakes. So you can feed them on large crickets and locusts. Now, moving on to a couple of the boa variety. Now, of course, you've got your viper boas, which are a sick species. I love the viper boas. They're one of my personal favorites. Uh, and of course, these are live bearing. They, they give live birth, so be prepared for that, that they will not be laying eggs. One day, you'll look inside the tank and there'll just be loads of little snakes. Um, but an awesome species, nonetheless, to keep inside this size tank. And another boa that you all know is my personal favorite is sand boas. Obviously, the smaller sand boa species, like the Kenyan and the rough scale, can go in the 60 long tank, but there are larger sand boa species. So you've got the Iranian sand boa, that have this brown and orange color that fades depending on how old they are. A super cool, unique species and one of the larger sandbar species. So you can put them in this large low tank because they're not going to utilize any more height. Now, another variation of snakes is your pythons that you can keep in here. Now, of course, you've got your stuff like your spotted and your children's python, which um, if you saw our uh, trip to Coventry, um, Cavian reptiles, we held a couple of those. We got to interact with them. An awesome species and uh, yeah, definitely one we, we talk about wanting to get these um, on, on all these different reptiles on, on when we mention these in our tank suggestions. Um, this is definitely one that we uh, have been interested for a while uh, and definitely one that we would actually be looking to getting. So the spotted and the children's pythons are a, part of a larger family. Um, they're part of the Antaraceae family. These are sort of miniature pythons from Australia. The spotted and the children's are the largest two, but the other two are the Stimpsons and the anthill python. You can find the Stimpsons python available. It's not as common as the children's and the spotted, but it is an awesome snake that will even stay a little bit smaller. And then the anthill python. Um, I haven't seen this really in captivity because they are so small, you have to feed them on like bits of pinkies, which tells you how small they are because you can't even feed them a whole pinky once they're out of the egg. 
Um, so if you didn't want the boas, you go for pythons and these will be great little egg layers and will go awesome in this tank, probably a 45 foot tall. So this comes to the end of our tank suggestion for the 90 long and of course we've got the 30 high and the 45 high that we've been talking about today. Uh, and of course we will be moving up to bigger tanks soon and like we said this was kind of a transition tank. Just a couple of suggestions on if you have a spare one of these, what to put in them. So if you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and the comment down below, if you have this tank that is already filled, let us know what you keep inside it or if you want this tank or if you want to keep something inside this tank, let us know what you would pick. So don't forget to subscribe to us here on Predator Exotics YouTube and follow us on our Instagram. We post daily content on there as well. And don't forget to leave a like. It shows that you are enjoying this series and that we should continue. We're coming up to the big tank soon, the final like finale soon. But we hope you guys have enjoyed. So without further ado, we will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.